All right, here we go. Welcome everybody to the very first Wildfly podcast. Uh, I'm super excited to be starting this. This is something I've kind of been talking about doing, just tossing the idea around for a while, but uh, finally committed to it and said, you know what, uh, what do we have to lose? Let's let's get this thing going. And I think the podcast platform is a great way to really dive deep and have some of these longer form conversations with you know friends in the fishing world, in the film world, in the business world, creative world, outdoor world in general. Um, that is kind of hard to fit into the videos that we do. This podcast is not just about me. This is not about self-promotion or anything like that. I really want this to be about you guys and being able to provide conversations that hopefully can add value to you all, whether that's in the fly fishing world, the filmmaking world, the photography world, and how the outdoors and creativity can really make a huge difference on all of our lives. So some of these we will have video available on our Wildfly podcast YouTube channel. So if you're listening and you're interested in watching and viewing it that way, uh, swing over to YouTube and check that out. So for the first episode, I figured there'd be no better guests to uh, start this thing off than uh, my good friends Adam and Steve from Blue Line Co. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Blue Line Co., they've been in a bunch of my videos in the past, including the short bus diaries that we've been doing recently, and they run a fly tank company that is based out of northern Alabama. It was really interesting to kind of hear their story and how they were introduced to fly fishing and how they got into it. Being in a part of the country that you wouldn't expect fly fishing to be prevalent or be even a thing. Uh, there's a lot of bass fishing, a lot of smallmouth fishing, and not very much trout fishing. So it was really interesting to hear kind of how smallmouth have played such a big role in their fly fishing career and how that has played a huge role in starting Blue Line Flies. So we definitely had some good laughs in this one. Uh, we also had some really good serious conversations, just breaking down some of the misconceptions of fly fishing and, and hopefully helping some of you who are new to the sport or haven't even gotten into fly fishing yet. Uh, kind of breaking down some of those barriers to make the barriers to entry just a little bit easier. Uh, one of my favorite parts from the conversation is, is really talking about appreciating your local water. Wherever it is that you come from, wherever it is that you fish and you grew up fishing, we talk about the importance of not taking that water for granted. Yeah, maybe it's not Montana, maybe it's not Belize, but there's something unique and special about that area that you are fishing. So I hope you guys enjoy this conversation. We uh, we actually filmed and recorded this in uh, our hotel room in Montana, in Ennis, Montana. We were, uh, we were out shooting a film recently and uh, a blizzard came in and it was just, there's just, there was no way we were going to go fishing that day. So we, uh, we brought the podcasting stuff and uh, we made a little janky setup in the hotel room. So don't judge our, uh, our setup. We just kind of moved some furniture around, hung some things up on the wall, tried to get as much lighting in as possible, and, uh, and just made it work. But before we get into it, I wanted to let you guys know we've got brand new apparel out. We've got new hats, shirts, sweatshirts, uh, mugs, stickers. We've got the whole nine yards. We've got a ton of stuff available. And uh, just in time for the holiday season, we're encouraging people to, uh, to shop early for their, uh, their Christmas shopping, their holiday shopping this year and uh, hopefully there's something on the, the website that you guys you guys like. But enough of me talking. Uh, I'm really excited for you guys to listen to this conversation, and uh, let's jump right into it. All right, well, welcome to the very first Wildfly podcast. Woo! We've got my good friends and yours, Adam and Steve, here from Blue Line Co., um this is uh Represent. there it is <laughs> this is the the first ever wildfly podcast and uh we figured this would be a cool way to dive into some some longer form conversations and um just kind of see what, what what comes of it talk about fishing creativity filmmaking and just any of the any of the bs that goes along you know goes on on all our trips and everything i'm not good at anything but the bs yeah, that's, from that's about list. all that we do we that's got to deal with the yeah, other stuff yeah if you're looking for valuable fishing information you should probably click out right now <laughs> yeah yeah like if you want to learn how to catch fish or like more fish or like how to be good at fishing go ahead and keep going yeah this is go talk that. to tom rosenbauer not us <laughs> but uh, I guess to start this off, uh, if you guys, obviously, I know you guys, and a lot of people know you guys, but um, you guys have a company, Blue Line Co., uh, custom flies and streamer patterns and everything. If you guys want to just tell me kind of you know how that came about and um, who you guys are. Yeah, so we've been legit for like four years now with a website, the works. Um, so we're you know going on our fourth season with that. Mm -hmm. uh, really fortunate. We learned a lot from it. A lot of stuff that we didn't really expect to come out of it has 
has it's been it's come been out quite of it. the journey. We've definitely gone to places we did not think that we'd ever go when we first started. It's like, yeah. hey, we're yeah. gonna start bringing out our own flies. Um, initially, it started. Uh, Steve and I both worked for a fly shop, and uh, th- there was a lot of there were some pros, but there was a lot of cons to dealing with some of the other big box shop flies. Uh, not not to name them, but e- there's really no buyer loyalty. There's no branding. There's no real anything when it comes to their product. No face to the company. Yeah, there's yeah. no face to that company. And most of them kind of, to me at least, have the mentality of fuck you, you'll buy it. Pretty much. And on top of that, we're in... Just making sales over here. Yeah, yeah just, yeah, just <laughs> making sales from you guys. We appreciate well, that. Well, ignore that low stock. Ignore the low stock, guys. We, we've actually we're restocked everything. Yeah. We've uh, restocked everything. So if it says low stock, we're fixing that. We're, we're, we're fixing that. Um, well, it's been fixed, I guess, by the time y'all are listening to this. Yeah, but hopefully. Anyways. Fingers crossed I get there. Um, so dealing with those guys were wasn't great. I mean, they're... Their customer service wasn't fantastic. They were out of stock of a lot of stuff. If you, when you when you needed it, they were out of stock. Um, you pretty much had to pre-order everything you wanted for the entire season, and you never really knew when you were getting it in either. It, yeah, and, and d- they up. never gave you a great idea of when those products would show up. Um, and you may pre-order twenty dozen flies, and only ten of them show up, and they didn't even tell you th- like that they that that's mm-hmm. all you were getting. So, um, when I was working with customers, trying to make fly orders, trying to get, you know, get orders together, it, it was extremely difficult. Um, and I always just thought when I was in that situation that I could do it better. One, and to, to that point as well is that, you know, what, what we grew up doing is smallmouth fishing, which we've done quite a lot with Scotty on that. That's what we love to do. That's what our company's based off of. And there's never really been a good manufacturer out there of smallmouth patterns because, well, it is a niche type of thing. And these big box companies, they look at the dollar sign, they look at volumes, and they look at sales on that stuff. And they're not getting a lot of sales out of these things because not a lot of people were doing it at the time. So it was very hard for Adam and I to find good smallmouth patterns out there unless we were tying them ourselves, which is the basis of all our patterns. But at the time, working in the shop, if we wanted to get patterns in that our customers could use to effectively fish for bass around there, we either buying downsized saltwater patterns or we were, you know, grabbing trout patterns and, you know, working with that but the downside of the trout patterns is they have such a small hook shank on a lot of them is that you know you miss a lot of these sets on these fish there so it was, it was kind of frustrating dealing with these these patterns that weren't catered to exactly what we needed what well, or it, it and if they did have just to interject if they okay. did yeah. have a bass section in their book it was six pages of poppers that were all looked the exact same, except they were just painted orange or yellow. I, I don't consider poppers a bass fly, and I would fight <laughs> you for that. <laughs> well, let's let's back up really quick for for like people who don't know. Um, obviously, like you know, like I said, I know you guys, but let's back up to where you guys are from. You know, like your location of where you started fly fishing, because I think that's really important for kind of like the the foundation of Blue Line Co. and like the you know, why you guys, um, you know, started making the patterns that you did and the type of fishing that you did. So let's back up to like where you guys started and how being in that location played a part in starting this. So Steve and I are both from North Alabama. Uh, we grew up pretty close to each other. Um, it, where, I mean, bass fishing is just king. I mean, absolutely. You know, we've got some of the, some of the best largemouth bass fishing in the whole country is located in North Alabama. Um, I mean, it was extremely popular. A lot of people did it. Um, some of the biggest bass tournaments are there. Yeah. 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 Some of the biggest bass tournaments that they, you know, professional, you know, competitive bass fishing tournaments are held, you know, all around us. Um, so that's kind of where we're from, where we grew up. There's no fly there, especially while we were growing up, there was no fly shop and there still isn't in my opinion. Nope. In the area for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Sam Bailey's outfitters was Uh around for a hot minute in North Alabama and, Got my first real fly rod from him. Shout out to Sam. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. Sam. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it, man. Um, but there, there was some, you know, there was some stuff around, around, and there are, there is a community there that fly fishes, but it's not very big. It's not very prolific. Prolific. Um, I mean, I remember when I, whenever, if I ever got to go on vacation or we were ever like stopping through going to Atlanta or Nashville, I wanted to go to a fly shop, and like. That was the king stop they go to. Yeah, like yeah. I remember, like I bought my first stuff up in Tennessee at uh, what's the name of that shop? Little River Outfitters. Oh yeah, like yeah, way back in the day. Back Ooh. like they were in an old, like they were. I think that was like one at least two buildings ago. I mm-hmm. think from where they're at now, 
and uh you know up in the smokies was was like the only place you could trout fish you know really close to the house um Wait, you don't want to go to the teleco <laughs> <laughs> unless you're at the Teleco <laughs> or somewhere else. But there was, I mean, there were some other places you could go, but it, mo- not very, I mean, it was all traveling to go there. Um, so, I mean, we both grew up around, you know, people, I mean, really good, I mean, world-class bass fishermen. I don't know why, I don't know why I didn't love it, but it just wasn't ever for me. I enjoyed it. I And uh, what, junior high and high school, I tournament fished a lot, but. This was one of those things that, you know, you, you need a, a ton of equipment, you need a bass boat, you need someone to live well. There's a lot more that goes into that. But and I say that with all the equipment we have now for fly fishing. <laughs> but at the time, you know, it's, you know, you kind of have to weigh your odds there. But at the same time, too, um, fly fishing is just a lot more active. And when you're a kid and you're super hyper and super active and you wanted to get out there and, and enjoy yourself and learn something new, you know, I was just fascinated by fly fishing. And, you know, it's one of those things that I just kept going, kept doing. And it's just a lot more active, a lot more fun for me. I'm not saying that, you know, typical bass fishing is the same. I know those tournament guys just grind it out. But just being where I was at, you know, that was my kind of outlet to explore and have fun. So it, I really keyed in on that as a child. Yeah, I really enjoyed – I mean, I I personally think that fly rods are a better tool of or a method of fishing on a river. Yeah, 100%, especially smaller uh, rivers that we fish Yeah, that you really can't get a motorized boat up and down. I mean – I mean, That's there the were, yeah, I mean, there was stuff that I, I really saw, like the reason fly fishing was cool in the Smokies or, you know, it, like in the park or on these really small trout streams that we did have that, you know, fly fishing was cool for a certain reason. And I don't know why I decided it, but I was like, well, that's a lot of fun. Why in the world am I not doing that at home? Mm-hmm. Like, why, why does this only exist in the Smokies, which is like, I mean, if you've never been to the southeast like and fly fished like i get you know there's all these places that there's tons of places you should go fish but if you like like just for the historical aspect of it if you like to fly fish you should go fish in the smokies oh, yeah yes yep. absolutely get up there for breakfast. i mean 100 yeah. that's where i caught my first trout yeah, yeah. that's I mean, same it's... same my first trout came over in the park as well like small I mean, stream like technical dry fly fishing if like, you can yeah. do that you pocket catch water, trout pretty right much that river. is the place to go for sure uh you may not be able to cast in wind, but you'll be able to cast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. yeah, but then there's not a lot of wind up there. Though. Then you that's see, like, thing. when I come out here to uh, like Montana or uh, yeah. Idaho, like, just get wrecked <laughs> by the wind. But and then people out here are like, oh, this is nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, you, I mean, every, everywhere has its challenges. But I mean, it, personally, even people that are big into fly fishing from Idaho, or if you live in Montana, or no matter where you live, I think you should take a trip to go fish in the Smokies. I mean, I think it's a it's some of the most historic fly fishing. If you haven't heard a lot about it, you should Google it. I mean, some of the best, so a lot of tr- trout fishing techniques and patterns and everything, all, a lot of it came out of, you know, the Smoky Mountain National Park area. Mm-hmm. But, you know, being there, that's kind of what got me into it. My family used to take camping and hiking trips and stuff like that up to the Smokies. Uh, you know, my come from an outdoor family that, you know, we liked to We used to like to go on a lot of, you know, weekend trips up to the Smokies and camp. Um, and so that's kind of where I was introduced to it, but I love doing it. And I wasn't happy with only doing something that I liked to, to do three or four times a year. Like I wasn't okay with that. Like it was so cool while I was there. I have the, I, I have that river five, a, a river five minutes from my house. Why am I not doing that same thing? Five minutes from my house on this river. So that's kind of where. And I know Stephen was the exact is in the exact same boat with that. I was well similar, but a little bit flip flopped on that. So I started when I was eight nine years old. One of my mom's work friends would come. I lived on the Flint River, which is he lived near the lower section of it, just right off of it. And I'd fish that with you know my bait caster, my spinning rod for smallmouth as a kid. And then one day, one of my mom's work friends showed up and started fly fishing. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so he started teaching me how to do it. I got me a little kit from White River over at Bass Pro Shop one one year and had my own setup and, you know, started fishing for smallmouth there. And I just was, I mean, I loved fishing for smallmouth as a kid, started fishing for it on a fly rod and was just enamored with it. And then it wasn't until seven or eight years later when I was up in the Smokies one time that I actually, you know, I got a guide trip up there because I'd wanted to catch a trout because, you know, I heard that's, you know, what everybody does, fly fishing and not working it from the back end of things, doing the opposite. And I was just, oh man, this is, this is kind of cool. So, yeah. 
Um, well, well, I mean, that was 20 years ago. Yeah, that was over over 20 years yeah. ago. Well, I guess walk me through. You know, nowadays I feel like there's a lot more resources available. There's YouTube. There, are, you know, I feel like a lot more shops and a lot more outfitters just available to people. But walk me through like you guys like really learning DIY like by yourself, getting out, getting your hands dirty, like just getting after it. And I feel like that's that's you know kind of played into how we go about our trips today you know it's not like we don't need we don't play by the books kind of deal it's like we don't need every single thing to be planned out it's like let's just let's just figure it out when we get out there we know our basics but like what what does that look like with just limited resources not a fly shop for you guys you know trying to figure out this this crazy sport you know? I mean, at least even today i feel like there's a huge lack of resources for for people who, uh, unless you're going to some big river in montana or idaho or maybe even a you know some rivers in the southeast. There's not a, there's no information about it. But you know at least you know what you're saying is right. You know you can at least hop on YouTube and watch a video. You can watch a video on like how to nymph mm-hmm. or how to you know the multiple casts that you should know to dry fly fish. You know you still at least have that information available to you. We were doing it. I mean, we had nothing. Nothing. There was there was barely nothing. any videos out there, barely information out there. You're calling up shops, and you're not really getting that good of information. And you're just trying to piece this stuff together with the limited amount of Google Maps that, that we had at the day or MapQuest. Yeah, MapQuest. <laughs> yeah, MapQuest. <laughs> yeah, MapQuest. <laughs> yeah. like there was, there was like nothing. You know, like literally all it was was like, well, I know that I can get to the river at, at this spot. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna sh- show up down here. Like I mean, I couldn't freaking drive. My mom would drop when my mom would drop me off <laughs> yeah. at the river and come back and pick me up hours later. Like there was, she'd no, sit, that. she'd Sorry. sit on the bridge and just honk the horn to be like, hey, hey come on. <laughs> I um, believe. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this is you know, I started doing this stuff before I could drive, but you know, yeah, you. I mean, you didn't have you worked with the equipment you had. I had no idea that there were other rods that you could have. Like I had no idea that there was a difference in rods or anything. You just had a rod. Uh, you had a, you had a six way. That's, that's a rod. A rod right? yeah, I yeah. had my five, six yeah, from I white five. river. And I was like, man, this thing is awesome. The nine yeah. foot deal. I was like, all right, cool. Great. Greatest thing ever. I throw poppers. I throw little clouds on this thing. I yeah. throw my little woolly burgers. I tied up at the house. Yeah. But there, like, yeah. Is, and there were, the cream there cream. were four flies that yeah. you could, yeah. you I, could I had four flies in my box. Yeah. But hey, the good news is you couldn't buy them either from right. anywhere near you. Nope. I, I mean, I remember sitting down. Uh, fuck, I'm gonna sound old. Like I had like the Cabela's, you know, like the they used to mail. Fuck, I don't know if they do anymore. It was like a Bible. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, it was I like that it was like three inches thick. You'd open this thing up. It was like ca- you know catalog order, and I'd like be like, Mom, please get, I, get I, can I, I in please there and get it? Like, Mom, Christmas birthday's coming up here. Yeah, soon. like <laughs> here's all my stuff I want. I need like, like fly tying stuff what? and flies. Like, and Mom, like please that. like freaking order me like a leader. <laughs> you know, it's like I can, I don't have leaders. Leaders don't exist in Alabama. Where the fuck are you gonna just go buy a leader? Oh, the worst was like my first setup. There was no such thing as a not, like a loop to loop connection for that. Oh, thing. that didn't exist. Yeah, I had a, I had a little pin at the end of it. And I could either tie it on there or I have to learn how to do a nail knot. You try teaching a ten year old how to do a nail knot, <laughs> Mr. No, Chiapetta. No. God bless you wherever you are. I hope you're listening to this because you're a saint for sitting there for two days straight to teach me how to tie a nail knot without the nail knot tool that we have now. I don't well, think I've ever needed to use a nail knot. I'm just gonna be honest. I'm a hundred percent i'm too stupid to ever learn to do, do a nail knot <laughs> i i can do one i can do one today but yeah back then i was uh-huh. i was stupid still am but i was real stupid <laughs> couldn't do a nail knot. i gave i gave it to my dad and my dad was like why don't they have some sort of system yeah. <laughs> with yeah. these and my dad like i would be like dad my leader's too like getting too short <laughs> yeah. can you tie a new one on and here? it's like a two-foot section i'm looking back now I'm like why did I have a two foot leader for a popper? Yeah, but like, <laughs> how did I catch fish on this? But you never, know, you know. never knew. Yeah, I never yeah. knew any better. No, I yeah, never knew. Because there weren't I resources. Think, I think it's, but that's the thing. Like, I think too many people get caught up with like needing to know everything. They need to know the exact length of their leader, the exact fly, and that yep. like inhibits them from like even just going out. Like you guys just yep. went out and were like, oh, let's trial just, and error. It's the let's best just way figure to do it, it out. I, you know? Yeah, I guess. And but back then there was no, there was no. Like you, I didn't know didn't anyone know. to ask. You, right. I didn't have anyone. To there ask. wasn't anybody have, around. Like, there wasn't. Th- there's a, there was a community in in town, but like it's a lot of older gentlemen. You know, and we're yeah, you, it, junior high, high school kids that one. Well, we don't have any interaction with these people, and two, how we, there's there's not a Facebook group that I could have joined at the time. Yeah, I don't, even, ask think, a I don't even think MySpace was a thing at the time. So like, no. 
it was if if nothing else the only way for us to expand on what we enjoyed was through trial and error so you know and that's kind of what we've brought through going forward okay we we have a uh, 30 minute time limit <laughs> yep. on our on our camera that we're just we're making sure that it didn't turn off all right we're back so i guess take me from you know kind of hearing a little bit of background how does you know you guys like not having resources you know kind of just doing it yourself how does that turn into then realizing hey like you know, cuz you guys grew up smallmouth fishing like that was your thing i grew up a trout fisherman going to the smokies going to the north carolina mountains and that's like all I knew, but you guys were in a totally different situation where you're fishing for, you know, smallmouth. And then to walk me from, from there. And then how, you know, you see that there's like a lack of there. I feel like there still is a lack of like, um, just exposure to smallmouth fly fishing, you know, and yeah. how that, that, how blue line kind of comes out of that. And you guys develop these patterns that are more geared towards, uh, you know, more geared towards smallmouth. If you ask any of my friends that have the excessive amount of flies, of mine we tie a shitload <laughs> yeah and we never that, stop tying <laughs> yeah that that's definitely one thing is like uh, so i've been almost for as long as i've been fly fishing i pretty quickly realized because there was no such thing as a fly shop that i could just go to there's no nothing local to me at all there's no there's i mean there's no internet that you can just hop on and be like oh ship me some bass flies that didn't exist so, well, that's because our mom was on the phone, so we couldn't use the dial. Dial up connection. One time, I got so close to ordering supplies that my mom called her friend. Disconnected. Oh. Or it was like, or it was like halfway through, he's like loading the thing. And then, oh, disconnected. And you hear mom like talking to her friend. In the next room. You guys are that old. <laughs> oh no, our first internet connection no, was dial up. That's okay, it's yeah. that old. I, we yeah. are that old. Okay. <laughs> we, we are quite a bit older. So, but yeah, that was you know going from going from not having the resources. I mean, I, all it was, was it was time on the water. I wanted to be there. I mean, that was, that's what I like to do that for fun. I mean, that's what I enjoyed doing. So I did it. And I mean, I remember like, heck, I like thinking back, like, holy cow, I was awful. I mean, like I was yeah. absolutely awful. Same. I mean, you, you got to improve somehow. So if you can look back and see that you were terrible, I mean, look now and think I'm a little less terrible. You're doing something right. I'm still terrible, but <laughs> hell, I was at least a little less terrible. We can blame the alcohol nowadays. nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but back then, I mean, I didn't have, I didn't have a lot to go off of. Yeah. It was just like, oh, it, like I thought that catching like a couple fish was awesome. And a, a which couple it, Which brim. it should be like when you first start. You know, sure. Like, yeah, so, absolutely. Like, it was. The small little. It was. The way. And, you know, it was, it. I remember like that stuff was a lot of fun for me. And so spending like spending time figuring it out was so much more rewarding. Like I felt extremely rewarded when I learned something like, and sometimes you, you like could clearly see what had happened or, or like what you learned. Like, okay, I just changed the fly to this and moved it this way and a fish ate it. One well, and understanding how that interacts too, be able to right. take that forward is so much rewarding than you know, someone just saying, "Okay, well, here, take this rod with this fly right here and cast it in that hole right there," and you catch a fish. Like, yeah, okay, when you're first starting off, that's great. You want to have some success, so you keep going on with it. But at some point, you want to start progressing and being challenged, finding that and finding reward in that, and being able to learn from that and be able to improve from that. There's something you know, something about that that's just hard to describe, but you know, is essential in any, any kind of activity that you're looking to improve in yeah and i think there, i mean there, i definitely think there's a lack of it today but there's a lot of one of those people that just want that instant reward nowadays right. that i i hate to say that social media causes that but social media is a big deal with that we see it and you see it we see it in our, our dms all the time it's just like people want to you know that want that shortcut to get something done it's like look there's not a good shortcut for it you know trust us on that you know you got to go through the process for it so and it's it's rewarding if you go through that. Yeah. It's it's way more rewarding yeah. because you know you think about I think about catching you know these bull trout or whatever that we did last summer or I think about like catching a a tarpon or catching you know a huge brown trout somewhere and I'm like like all of the fish that went in to me catching that fish is is incredible. Yeah, it was never. Like I never rolled up to any stream in my life and was just like cast out and here's a huge monster brown like that that doesn't exist. It's all the other fish and all the all the like brim in in North Alabama. 
pause for the GoPro. We're good. GoPro pause. I mean, it's all the brim that I caught in Alabama. It's all the bass. It's all the smallmouth. It's the it's the gar. It's all the different fish that I've caught in my life. To that I've like put together this knowledge of like fly fishing that lets me go to Canada, dial it in in a in a day or two, and catch bull trout. Or go to you know go to Belize and catch tarpon. Like it's that it's the all the stuff that I've done here is what lets me do it. It's not because you know someone says, "Hey, go throw this fly in this hole and strip it this way, and you'll catch a fish." Yeah, like because what are you, like what are you taking away from that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean like it was fun and a it picture. was awesome. That's about yeah, it. A picture. Yeah. Like you, like what did you learn doing that? <clears throat> Verse, I really feel like where we grew up was like you, but not, I mean, I'm not like saying it was just a hard knock life or something, but like, <laughs> I mean, you just had, I mean, you just didn't have the information for you. So you so had you, to learn. It was, it was, you had to learn. It was habit for us. Like, that's just how we've always done that is, you know, we go out there, we trial and error, we figure this thing out ourselves. And, you know, that's just how we've always done it, how we're always going to do it. And to y'all's point, it's a lot more rewarding when we do it that way. And, you know, we leave a lot more satisfied, whether we catch one fish or 50 fish yeah at least we figured it out ourselves. i I, I didn't i mean how you you roughly know how much time i spend on google maps i mean like i don't i never like a lot of the places that we fish we didn't learn the even today we didn't learn these places from instagram or hired a guide and to say hey take me to this spot to catch a fish like even a lot of the places we go like from the canada trip I didn't call guides. I wasn't calling up, you know, fly shops and saying, Hey, where do I go fish? Hey, tell me where bull trout are. Now I did the research. Yeah. And so when you get there and it works, it's a lot more fun for you. So real quick, if you slide into my DM or, or my company's DM and ask us where to fish, I'm going to like your message and I'm never going to reply to it. Yeah. So just a heads up on that. Ouch. I'm not going to be mean to you, but you're going to get ghosted, son. Yeah. Oh, I guess we should say we, for, for people who, um, are listening and probably don't know we are actually sitting in a hotel room right now in Ennis, Montana, because we uh, there's a blizzard going on outside. We uh, yeah, we are here shooting a what was supposed to be a fall series, some sort of fall series, and we kind of skipped right to winter. It's not fall. All right, Pete, to that. <laughs> yeah, Adam Adam calls us a few days ago and says, uh, "Yeah, have you guys looked at the weather?" And Steve and I, of course, are no, and it's 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 supposed to be thirty. 20 and sub zero at night. And it was three degrees when we rolled in. It was three degrees. When, yeah. So yeah, we skipped, we skipped, we ski daddled past fall yeah. here into, into this trip. So, oh, well, so, back, back, so back, back to your question was like, how did we turn, yeah. how did we end up Kinda turning sidetracked there. from, you know, what we were doing to fly company, I guess. So you couldn't go, as we said, we couldn't purchase flies. You couldn't just go down to your local fly shop and then hand you a couple things and say, thanks and leave. Um, and back then, even the few poppers that are in the book, it, I mean, there's not a lot of bass flies. Fix your hackle. Yeah. Hey, you know, fi- you, hey, fix your hackle. You know who I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking to you. You you know who I'm talking about. Your hackle's messed up. So we, I mean, even, even back then you couldn't, you know, there weren't, it, there weren't a lot of bass flies. So f- fly tying was almost a necessity for us. I mean, we both started tying flies shortly after we started fishing because i mean the you guys that have the you know them internets that can get on there and purchase you know flies for dirt cheap is like bluelineflies.com <laughs> <laughs> check it out <laughs> blue line insert blue line plug here yeah. you're not not that they're dirt cheap for, specifically for me but that you can get on and purchase any fly that you want to and on, on the planet and it be at your house before your next fishing trip, that's still insane to me. Like it's even though I'm the one, even though I provide that service, it's still freaking insane to me. Um, I mean, I we spent so much time going to the river and not catching fish that it's like it's literally absurd. Yeah. It, it's laughable at this point when we look back right. at it. Yeah, when I look back at like eight year old me, I'm like, holy cow, you were so stupid. <laughs> Why did you put legs on that? You an idiot. <laughs> What, what what is this? Come on! <laughs> you must be the dumber, dumbest motherfucker. But I, you know, I look back at some of those first flies that I've ever tied because I, I, you know, I put them. I put a lot of the stuff in a box actually that I like some of the first flies that I ever tied. 
when I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. That's good. Look at that. That's something you'd buy at the shop. <laughs> and it's like... So fool yourself. You're showing off your mom. <laughs> oh, that's great. Honey. Oh, that's, that's great, great, honey. Wow. Great, yeah, it. that looks so good. That's good. Wow, you should be in a Bass Pro Shop catalog. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Ah, yeah. So you, you know, you wind up, ha- like you have to tie to fish where we live. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't a lot back then anyways, because you, like there were no flies other than poppers and poppers just do not the people from the midwest i'm gonna catch a bunch of flack you're gonna get a bunch of comments <laughs> people are gonna be like oh that's bullshit adam uh, poppers it overheated oh it overheated yeah saying let it cool down okay we'll let it cool down we got this guy keep going the uh, i mean the, the internet's gonna be all like oh that's bullshit adam poppers don't catch big smallmouth day in and day out it's cool when they work. Don't fucking get me wrong. I love catching a big small mouth on a popper. And when it does work, it, it's fucking cool. I'm not saying that it it never 100% works. But day in, day out, you do not catch big fish on topwater flies. You don't. Trout included. There's no fish that day in, day out, you catch big fish on. Unless you're going to Alaska and fishing mice. Okay, unless you're fishing mice. Yeah. But that, that's there Alaska. Are, We're uh, not, that's also Alaska. I will also say that there are not this very not many smaller. subsurface mice patterns. Because <laughs> that doesn't really you add up. Dead drift and a drowned mouse? Dull, dull drowned mouse? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I've got some streamers that I, I would I would argue could look like a drowned mouse. <laughs> Definitely so. <laughs> but like poppers just aren't... It's, it, Wherever you fish, that's great. And hey, if you think I'm wrong, call me up, put me in your boat, and let me fish all day, and row me down a river, and buy me beer, and I may or may not concede <laughs> to you. But that's a big le- offer. <laughs> that's well, a stout challenge, well put, there, sir. <laughs> well, put up or shut up. Yeah. Internet. T- tell tell them how hard it is for you to try to get a popper past me as far as a fly to bring out for our company. God damn it! I so y'all like poppers, you do. Like you as the internet really want top water flies from us, and I get it. And they freaking sell, and there's nothing cooler. <laughs> and like y'all are still on the thing, and like it's fucking great that like you want to catch a fish on top water fly, and that's awesome. Like that's great that you're there, and and I want you to be there, and you're not getting it from me, and it's because of Steven. because I'm want I want to sell you some top water flies. I do. Oh, at and least at least what three top times water a year? Three or four times a year, I'm like Steven, What about this? And he's like, Why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> I've only said that twice this year, right? The twice other two times, I was like, we'll consider that. I was very PC about it. You know, you, you watch these presidential debates, and they, they put stuff off the side and never answer the question. That's me when Adam brings up a topwater Steven fly. Can talk, <laughs> Steven can talk and not say anything. <laughs> I'm really good about so, that when it comes to the topwater fly. Well, I finally kind of got him a little bit. You saw the, the new topwater streamers, some of the ones we're coming out with from our Bass Series last summer. Um, Got a few five-inch smallies on that. That's right. <laughs> Roll Tide. You want five-inch smallies, you come to Blue Line. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're they're good, and they're different than a popper. Yeah, yeah. So we are going to be coming out with some of that stuff. But back even then, even today, you pull up a, a book of a, cat, a fly catalog, and it's poppers. And then like a Clouser minnow variant. And you're like, wow, this is fantastic stuff. So I started tying flies. My dad was a big bass fisherman, never like competitive kind of thing, but he was a big bass fisherman. Uh, you know, Steven grew up around a lot of competitive bass fishing. I started tying flies to be like, well, can I tie like what? Like, what? I mean, I guess, you know, me without the internet was like, well, if they're throwing some sort of, I don't know, I, Steven knows more about bass fly, bass lures than I do. Practically anything that you see out there on the tour with any of these guys, any bass shop, go to Bass Pro Shop, go to Cabela's, you walk down the bass aisle there, most of those hard baits that you see there, and as well as some of the soft baits there, we can tie up a version of that as a fly, you know, that has a similar action, similar look, it does a similar job as far as, you know, showing off that classification of a bait fish or crawdad or whatever kind of bait that the bass is yeah, after. Y- y'all haven't seen those and I'm not showing them to you. <laughs> some of the, some of the shit, some of the shit we come well, up with is well, there's some dirty stuff. Yeah, that's, little, it's R rated. We're not, we're we not tie some dirty it. stuff. And as well as another conversation that Adam and I have with these flies that we bring out too, is that, you know, there's certain flies that, you know, him and I will cast all the time, you know, on eight weights, but we have to look at it. It's okay. Well, 
not everybody has an eight way. Everybody has like a five or six or seven, yeah. you know, that kind of deal. So we have to kind of, we slowly bring out these larger flies like the Cooter Brown, our bronze stout, um, the Brokeback, which is coming out soon, the Mima, which is coming out soon. You know, we're only looking to bring out one or two of these big, dirty flies that we love to throw every year just because uh, at the end of the day, you know, as much as we love it, it, it does come out of numbers. They just don't sell as much. So it, it's hard for us to do because we love these flies. But, you know. You want to make sure they're tested, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know. I mean, and we get, you know, most of you guys don't have 20 rods to throw flies on. I that, didn't. What was that your dad said? <laughs> told us, told us about us. <laughs> most people have, like, one or two rods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. last time we were, when we were filming that fishing, uh, if you guys haven't seen the smallmouth film with us and Scotty, I guess you should go watch that, probably. Yeah, go check it out. You should pause this yeah, right now and go watch this. you should pause this and go watch this. But, uh, so my dad helps us out some with that film, and he was like... I, he was like, I don't understand you guys are like, you guys look like bass fishermen. Like you pull, you pull out of your boat. You've got like 10 fly rods in your boat. Like you have a different fly rod for every fly, not a different fly for your rods. We're trying to make them work differently. <laughs> and he's not wrong. Cause we do. Um, but that's been accumulation over. Well, yeah. That's an accumulation right. over 20 years of fishing. Right. That's not like something that I just went and did, but um, yeah, I mean, so I started out, I, I mean, like, as I said, my dad was a big bass fisherman. So dad would go fishing and catch fish or was doing well. And I was like, oh man, like what, what, what did you like? What is that that he's throwing? Like, and how come I can't throw that on my fly rod? Well, you can't cause it was a five weight is the reason is the answer, <laughs> yeah. but short answer. It, <laughs> the, back short, yeah. the long and the short of it is that I had a five weight. Um, no, I mean like, you know, people are, the the people of the internet are going to come find me and beat me up. I'm just kidding because people on the internet are soft as fuck. But um, <laughs> no, the people looking at you like, comment section. Look, look, there's yeah, looking there's at you people comments. on the internet. Looking at you comments. Um, so the I mean, I, literally one of my f- the only frog. Even still, I've tied I don't know how many frog patterns. I cannot find a frog that I like more than one that you go to the fucking Cabela's f- tackle section. And buy the da- goddamn rubber frog <laughs> with the double hooks on top, uh-huh. with the you know sixteen thousand legs hanging out the side yeah, of it. A little, a little like um, looks like. Uh, I cannot. <laughs> I've tied a hundred fucking thousand frogs in my life, and I still can't find one that's that good. Frog season on on the bass lakes. I have an eight weight with one of those tied on. <laughs> I mean, it works. I guess we're getting somewhat sidetracked from the from the original question, but like it's a good digression. One of my points though <laughs> yeah. is that fly fly fishing is not anything it's not anything different. It is just a different way of fishing. So it is no different than using a spinning reel, using a bait caster, using a fly rod are all the same are all in the same category to me. The people that think you're high and mighty because you're fly fishing, you're not. You're no different than some dude with a spinning reel. You you may just drink. It's a different I'll, technique, and I feel like there's there's a lot more work, and there's a lot more of like an art form to it in terms of like learning the sport. But I think yeah, you're right. The it's learning curve is steeper. The learning curve is steeper. I want to I want to continue this rabbit hole too, and kind of pivot on what we always dealt with at the fly shop when we worked down in Alabama, because all all the time people would come in there, and they wouldn't necessarily be coming there for the fly shop. They may come in there for clothes or something, and they they'd be like, oh, there's a, there's a fly shop in Alabama. Oh, y'all have trout in Alabama. It's like, well. <laughs> We're okay. not going to talk about that we're, one. We're spot. not going to talk about trout in Alabama. Yeah. But we're like, oh yeah, and no, you could fish for all these other species. Just start rattling it off. Their eyes kind of glaze over. But it was just one of these predispositions that we found, we figured out, like working the shop there early on, is that a lot of people think have this purist mindset with fly fishing. Is that you know you can be on these blue ribbon trout stream throwing a dry fly with a five weight bamboo rod or whatever. You know that r- whole river runs through its uh, d- stigma for you're it. wrong. <laughs> and and that was the biggest thing that we tried within all of our our fly fishing classes that we taught and all the guided less guided trips we took um is that you don't have to fly fish for trout you can fly fish for all these other species and at the same time there's multiple ways to fly fish and there's no right way to do it there may be a more effective way to do it but there's not a wrong way. okay i say there's not a wrong way there's there's plenty of wrong ways but there's not a right way and so we find all these times that you get these purists out there's oh you can only be dry fly you can only throw nymphs or you know good if you're man. Throwing stripper, good man yeah, good, good man, man. <laughs> i still hate you mr guy in the big hole all right that was Look one time keep, that was one going, time i threw a tri <laughs> but you know it and it and that's one thing that we try at Blue Line is like I don't necessarily like break down these barriers that are up in the industry, but like 
because I mean, we're just a small company. We don't have that kind of pool, but almost everything that we're doing nowadays, as far as, you know, the techniques that we're using, as far as our swivels that go, they, who was using swivels beforehand? No, you didn't see that anywhere. And we're throwing swivels now with dry flies because it works great. It takes out the whirly birds and you can use it for all sorts of things. And this way we tie up our flies, additions we put onto our flies, the techniques that we use when we're casting these things. Like what we're trying to do out here, you know, there's a reason we don't let Scotty film a lot of this stuff when we're out there. <laughs> it's because when we're trying these R&D things out, we know that it's going to work and we're trying to get this backlog of credentials to it because like what, what happened when we brought out the swivel, one of our buddies who fished with Adam for years – Every time he fished with Adam, always had a swivel on there. And Adam was telling him about these swivels that we were about to bring out. And he's like, oh, there's no way that'll work. And I was like, you've, you've used that on the fly line for the last three years you fished with me. Yeah. Like, and it's yeah, just his like, mind was just blown. Like, there's, it, it, like you it, can't it, cast a swivel. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. And so, like, you know, with these new techniques, these new, new items that we're trying to bring out, new additions to our flies, we have to backlog. I mean, we do thoroughly test all of our flies, not saying that we don't. But for these other things, we have to do extreme backlogging on the stuff to make sure that, you know, when we bring it out, people don't just lose their goddamn fucking mind. Because there's a lot of things that we do that if I said, hey, we're doing so-and-so, it would be like... <laughs> You're doing what? Get get, you're, get the fuck out! Don't even don't even talk to me right now. <laughs> so, and it's just one of those things. Is like, I and and I, I I digress even further. But like, it's that stigma of that it's a purist sport. It's like no no, it's just another way of catching these fish, yeah. doing what we love to do. And if we can figure out a way to make it more effective and possibly merge the different types, there doesn't need to be this barrier between spin fishing and fly fishing I mean, that people try to put up there. You know, th there's there's a lot of in between that you can do to merge them together to make an even more effective way of. Yeah, I mean, we have so many of you, uh, so many of you guys. At least, if you're a Blue Line customer, yeah, so many of you guys have emailed me or DM'd me or whatever, saying, "Hey, I spin fish, but I'm getting into fly fishing," and that's freaking great. We want more of those people, and that's that's awesome. That's a fantastic way to start. I think it's making the barrier barrier to ent barrier of entry a yeah. little bit like smoother because it seems like. Like it can be a very intimidating sport, right? And because there is a huge learning curve huge learning to fly curve. fishing. I mean, it, and it's like a light switch. Like the di it, I used to tell people all the time, the difference is, is that you actually have to practice. Like you have to, you need to practice this. It, most people do not fish enough that they are able to own, like just learn when they're fishing. You've got to practice at your house or whatever. You don't have to practice throwing a spinning reel at your house just straight up it's easier well and to that point though there are certain things that if you want to if you want to get good with is the game about to start i think so um we'll, we'll, we'll keep going we'll, we'll yeah. catch up with it yeah but um you know to that point there you know if you're serious about anything which to to fly fishing there's a steeper learning curve if you're serious about getting it you're gonna need to practice but the same thing goes with conventional fishing too if you're serious about it like when i was wanting to get into tournament fishing you know i'd be out on my front porch flipping a flipping a jig to the tree stump out in my front yard or flipping it to a different tree you know you're gonna have to practice with anything it's just that i think people get in that you know that mindset with the spin rod where they can go out there they throw a little 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 crappie jig or whatever and, and slay on it that aren't too serious about it and they try to get in fly fishing that they need to understand that when you're getting into it, there is a learning curve that you need to have that mindset. Oh, it's okay. I need to practice. I'm going to have to learn. I need to pick people's brains. You know, I don't I don't necessarily ask them how to do something or where to go, but like, hey, I'm trying to tie this knot here. Can you show me how to tie this knot here? You know, I'm trying to figure out how to look for these fish here. You know, ask those those kind of questions. Not, hey, where should I go fish? But ask, hey, how do I look look for a place to go fish? Like yep. with the last series yep. that you did. Yeah, straight straight up, what like you need to put more time into it. If you're not it, like if you are getting frustrated and you're not like catching the fish and you're not getting the results you need, hundred percent, it's because you're not putting the time in. Uh, I mean, the, that's it may and, not be what you want to hear. It's okay if you're not putting the time in it, but just don't complain. Don't yeah, have those that, no, that's fine. Yeah, you don't know? have yeah. the expectation of being a right. master at the sport when you don't put the time into it. it I mean. It, that's exactly the truth. Is it can't? It is easy to go throw a crappie jig on a spinning reel and catch a bunch of fish, but you talk to those tournament bass fishermen. That's not what they're doing. No, those those people that are good at bass fishing are the same as me and Steven. They're the ones that are practicing in their front yard for a week before they go on a saltwater fishing trip. Mm -hmm. And then taking I mean, diagrams of the lake and the area around it, trying to figure out where the fish are going to be. It's the same thing that we do with rivers. We're looking, okay, well, can, can I possibly put in here? I don't know, maybe we need to go drive up and look at it. Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at places that I've, I know like the back of my hand on Google Maps, mm -hmm. trying to learn them better. And I mean, it, I don't know, working in a fly shop, I had a lot of lines that I used to say, but like, Two of my two of the ones that I like that I've heard from other folks are like, 
I mean, you know, maybe the PC culture isn't exactly on this one yet, but like Tiger Woods still takes golf lessons. Yeah. Or maybe someone who, you know, isn't in trouble, like Phil Mickelson or whatever. Mm-hmm. He that dude still hits hits practice golf balls. Oh, yeah. Do you think that he rolls up to the Masters and just like that's the first golf game he's played? I guarantee they hit more golf balls in one week than I do every year. Yeah. Most people do it the entire Well, that's year. why I fucking suck at golf. <laughs> yeah. I heard a, a good analogy uh in the past, and it's it's kind of like you've got old Jerry, eighty year old Jerry, who's been fly fishing for forty years, right? Good man. Good man. <laughs> been fly fishing for man. forty years. He throws I bet he throws a purple haze. <laughs> he definitely throws a purple <laughs> haze. Purple haze. <laughs> and uh but he, he fishes one time a year. Right? He goes out to Montana once a year. Mm-hmm. So Jerry's been fishing for forty years, but he's been forty times. Then you've got, you know, Mr. Twenty year old. Let's call him Steve. We got Steve. Yeah. And and he's been fishing for two years. But I like he, this guy already. <laughs> he goes he goes three times a month. You know? And so you think about like the difference between Steve and Jerry. Like Jerry's only going once a year. Yeah, he can say, Oh, I've been fly fishing for years. But in reality, you know, what what has he really gotten out? Like he's the the amount of days that he's gone is yeah is way it's less negligible. than mm-hmm. Steve. You know. May, check my math if I'm wrong. But let's let's pivot on this. Um and I kinda wanna talk from you guys because for people who don't know we're obviously a different age obviously and we come from you guys are from alabama i'm from north carolina and we had no idea who each other were he plays fortnite we play call of duty <laughs> <laughs> i don't play fortnite but I, I did in college. trying to relate to the internet here. <laughs> i'm just trying to relate to our audience here <laughs> give uh, them something they can understand but i guess it'd be it'd be fun to talk about because we've only known each other for just over a year now, which is pretty crazy. And we've been on some really epic trips. And so it'd be cool to talk about kind of how we got connected and then how we are now sitting here in Montana in October in a blizzard. And we're, we're, we have the Short Bus Diaries that has been coming out and will be coming out for the next couple of weeks. And so we've got some other cool trips planned. So. Long story short, our buddy B bailed on us. We're like, <laughs> B, bro, what's up with this? And so we're like, okay, well, you got anybody else you want to fish with? And he's like, well, I got this one dude I've, I've been working with. And we're like, all right, cool. And so Adam fished with him, and the rest is history. That's <laughs> like very, yeah, shortened version. <laughs> shortened version. The shortened version is about true. Yeah. Um, so B was, we were like, hey, man, we need a, uh, like, hey, we need someone to do this. If you're like, if you're not available, doing like a film. To, yeah, to do, on yeah, some video. We want to shoot some video, more video stuff. Like, Steve and I wanted to get more into the video aspect. Because we feel like, just a, a a quick aside, we feel like that a lot of the videos you see are just you know fish picks. Hey, isn't this awesome? I just rolled up to this place and like caught this fish. It's not as like educational. We want people learning how to do this stuff, but also like pushing you to the fact that you need to work on this yourself too. Like you can't just watch this YouTube yeah, video. Not just it. pure fish porn, and also not be right. like a stale educational video right which, which are good which, for some people yeah which are there mm-hmm. which are there they're there but, but i feel like there's not a great mixture between the two on the internet which is what i was like well we could bridge that gap like we could teach you how to do this we could be educational some of the films you know have a lot less views like the how to e-scouting video has a whole lot less views than short bus but again that's a niche one but that's specific to just it, teach people right but, th- but like, I feel like we can help bridge the gap between the videos that are on mm-hmm. on YouTube between fish porn and... Clickbait. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's just what a lot yeah. of it is. It's just, just a clickbait. lot of clickbait. And yeah. so that's that's what we were working on with B a little bit. B got way busy doing what he's up to. So he was like, hey, there's a guy I've been working with. His name's Scotty. You should hit him up. I was like, okay, cool. What's his number? So I'm calling Scotty. I'm like, yo, bro. What about it? <laughs> in, I got your number. I, I don't know who you are. I, but got I camera, we like to fish. Yeah, let's, like, let's like something happen. Yo, let's let, like let's fucking do this. And so Scotty was like, actually, I'm coming out. I'm coming out west to do this film. What was the name of that one? Long time coming. Long time coming. It was a long time coming. I guess a, to come out yeah. west. Yeah. And so Scotty is bebopping out west. I live like six hours south where he's fishing. So I was like, well, fuck. I might as well like might as well scoot over and actually meet Scotty. <laughs> If we're gonna like start planning some shit, am I? 
Am I in that film? I think I'm in it for like four you seconds. Have one cut in the back of your head. <laughs> it's like you're just standing there in the water. How does it feel so, like Doss in there more than you? <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. don't want to mix up the audience. I didn't, they, That's true. They'd be so confused. Like, they would be. They, this, they, were, the they weren't ready for it yet. That's right. Yeah. So if anyone caught them, they're wondering who the fuck that dude is they, just standing there in the river. That's Kenny Powers. Is Kenny, that? That's Kenny Powers. They were like, yeah, they weren't rig- ready for the belligerent degenerate blue line <laughs> crew yet. So, but I need to, obviously we had to make sure that you jived with the de- degenerate blue line crew. And, and he fit in well. <laughs> and, and you fit in well. Surprisingly so. It was, oh, almost, wow. it was a little scary actually. Yeah. I was actually like, wow, this guy's actually like, so fast forward, He's cool. <laughs> fast forward, what like it was like two or three weeks because we we went. Yeah, to, it was, oh, yeah. this was only like two weeks later. Two or three weeks later, we bought you a plane ticket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> because we so, were trying to link up in Boone, and we just gonna make that happen while I was out there. My my yeah. first time fishing out west, like I had fished in Colorado, like in my sophomore, my freshman year of college, but it was like it was you know not really fishing out west. It was like a day, and we mm-hmm. were like whatever. But anyways, that was like my first real western experience was like going to Montana. And then, oh, you little, little, little pit stop? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, we'll and then, you when you get back. <laughs> and then, like, two weeks later, or two or three weeks later, we're, like, going up to, to Canada in Adam's truck to go chase bull trout. Dude. And so, like, that was, <laughs> that was for us, at least, that was an epic fishing trip. You know, we've been, we've been coming out west for eight or nine years, just packing up the truck and coming out here for a month or so and just bumming around. And shout out to our manager, Carla, if you're listening to this, for uh, just not scheduling us while we were out here. You're the best. Um, that being said, uh, we've just kind of, I guess each time we've just kind of elevated our trip, you know, what can we do a little better this time? What can we do a little better this time? And then, you know, we'd kind of mess around with bull trout, uh, the time before that we were out here, um, not so much mess around them, but we were fishing one of these, um, one of these, uh, tributaries for cutties, uh, some West Slope cutthroat cause we hadn't caught those before. And we were like, Oh, there's bull trout in there. You can't really catch them. And you know, oh, okay, cool. Well, we actually saw what a bull trout was and we were like, I want to catch that. Wow, that's big. I was like, how where can do, I, where can yeah, I actually fish yeah, for this? Yeah, and you know, we started doing some research, and it's very, very restricted on how you can fish them in the States because while they're not endangered here or endangered in general, they're endangered in the United States. Uh, don't ask me how that works. Adam, <laughs> thank God he's not here because he'd go on a huge tangent about that. <laughs> but anyway, so we started planning this trip for uh, to run up to uh, Canada because they're just – they're everywhere. You have to get a special permit to fish them, but it's not that much more. Um, as long as you have that, you're good to fish, and they're just – like I said, they're big, they're thick in there, and it's just a blast to fish. They're in just rough country, beautiful scenic area. And so while we're planning this, you know, like you were saying there, we were wanting to put some some footage together, you know, kind of explain how we do this do do yourself kind of deal. So let's get this trip in there. And man, that was that was an epic journey. And uh, I kind of want to, you know, uh, what I was get, leading into with that is like, you know, that was a brand new way of fishing for you. You've done a little bit of the out west stuff, you've done a little bit of the streamer stuff here and there, but like that was your mind was completely blown. Like it was. It was new for Adam and I, but still, you know, it's still in that kind of same channel that we're used to fishing in. But like for you, I want to know your reaction. <laughs> what happened? You get out there, you're in the middle of fucking nowhere. You know, we had that one day we walk up there and we're like cut off by a bear. Where we're trying to get back up the truck. <laughs> like you're just like, what the fuck? And then you hook into that massive fucking bull. Like, well, give me your give me your impression on that trip. To, to say the least, <laughs> I was not familiar with casting sink tip or an eight weight. I, I think growing up fishing like a four to six weight, six weight was heavy for me, right? And so that was, I might have to get one of those. Oh yeah, go for it, dude. Um, a oh, six, yeah. but like fishing, fishing, you know, big, big. Sponsored by Trolley. Yeah, that's our that's our sponsor for the podcast today. Uh, trolley, gummy worms. But fishing, fishing a big rod and fishing sink tip and heavy flies was so out of my comfort zone. And I was getting really frustrated, I know, at first because... I was like, of course, with these guys, I'm like, oh, I got to like impress these dudes. Like I got, or just like, I'm trying to keep up, you know, just a side note, anybody that fish, you don't have to impress us. I wasn't right? trying to impress, but you know what I'm saying? Like, if you I'm want to impress to... us, bring some whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it was, it was such a learning curve for me on that trip and it was very humbling because, you know, I, I think I got very comfortable in like what I, what I was doing out in the East coast, which is great. But I think going out there and seeing this whole other world of, of fishing, especially streamer fishing was, um, was was really impactful i guess for my just outlook on the sport and so uh one epic was or one canada was epic it was blew my mind just getting there and uh obviously that I, I wasn't really familiar with bull trout honestly before that like i i didn't really understand the hype of bull trout i'd seen a few <laughs> videos like oh there's bull trout in there but i was didn't think anything of it and then when we like moved and like caught the first couple bull trout it was like it was like wow this is this is the real deal 
Yeah, so that yeah that that first day on that one river uh, that shall not be named. I feel like I'm in a Harry Potter movie right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, hooking in that first bull and that thing just savaged the rod. And you're just like, I guess I'm not savaging fish out here. They're savaging me. <laughs> that was just insane. And then and then right after that, we had the bear cow scare. We did. I've never smoked crack. <laughs> but I tell you what, thank, thank you for clarifying that before you get into the conversation. I just I have, no, have I, I would let's let him talk. <laughs> I need to hear this. Okay, yeah. but I've never smoked crack. Okay, but fair enough. People who who smoke crack love it. I mean, they <laughs> love crack, and I feel like the that. <laughs> I want to see where you're going with continue, this. Continue, continue, please. Blue Line does not have an HR department, and uh, that's a good thing. We're about to change um, that. So yeah, we're gonna have to hire an HR manager. If you know anyone, submit your resumes. I feel like the first time I saw bull trout. Was probably like a crack addict the first time they smoked crack. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, that is fantastic. That's good stuff, and I need more of it." <laughs> and that's my take on bull trout. Ch- chill, Tyron Biggins. <laughs> I need but, you to chill. When we were on some weird river in Montana that you are not allowed to fish for bull trout on, we went because we heard there was like some just insane cutthroat dry fly fishing, and. We saw, uh, as you mentioned, some bull trout on that trip, and I was like, holy shit, I have to go do that. I have to. Mm-hmm. So I started doing a bunch of research. I knew there were some places in Montana that you can target them, some places in uh, in Idaho. But you know, most of the extent of the bull trout range is Canada. And that's why I was like, well, it, it, the U.S. has so much red tape and all sorts of bull crap that you have to deal with. Because they're they they're, they are more rare in the U.S. They're not really an endangered species per se. They're more protected. Maybe. They're a protected mm-hmm. species, but they're not. The only reason that the, there's a bunch of red tape in the U.S. because there's not very much habitat in the U.S. that they exist in. It's not because the habitat's gone. It's not because it's been depleted. It's because the habitat in the U.S. isn't really there for them. It's mostly in Canada. So Canada has way less red tape and they want you to like the U S almost doesn't want you to fish for them. I mean, they make it so difficult per, we saw our short bus diaries too. how difficult the U S wants it to be to tar- to fish for bull trout versus Canada's like, yeah, come up here and freaking fish for them. Like that sounds great. Just, there's, I mean, there's still special permits set in place, I think because, but there's, but there's that it was, it's how, how much yeah. was it? It was yeah. ten dollars a fifteen dollars a day, I think, on top of your fishing permit. It if was, that it was minimal. I mean, and the regulations weren't the, I mean, a single hook stream. Okay, cool. That, okay, great. Fine. We yeah. were doing that anyways. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, like it's it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. single hook uh, barbless. Yeah. Single, single hook, hook barbless, barbless. Yeah. and you can go and and hey, here's where the bull trout are. Here's where you need to go find them, and you can find information on it. I mean, from the from, like from the state too, not just from a fly shop, yeah, yeah, fly shops or whatever. It wasn't some hush hush thing that you're pushing people to do in the U.S. So it, they're, yeah. When we started, when we like really decided to start, you know, doing that trip, I was like, man, I've got to figure out how to go catch some bull trout. So talk, I mean, because Steve and I did zero research before this, and so like. That's I guess I have Adam. this is a good example because we talked about this a little bit in our scouting video, but this being a DIY trip, like it wasn't a guided trip and like, like most of our trips and you, you know, kind of walk me through like how we landed in Canada and like the process of going through, you know, Google maps, um, and, and kind of figuring it out that way. So one of the big rivers had bull trout in it hundred percent. Like there were in just a quick Google, you could find like eight guided services taking you up this big river on these like jet boats and all this goofy shit. And I was like, all right, so that exists. Um, <laughs> so I knew that bull trout would be in the tributaries per our Montana experience, fishing for cutthroat and seeing like, I was like, oh, wow, that's a weird log. Holy fuck, that log is swimming. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, it's eight feet long. <laughs> In, I'm gonna get out of the water now. <laughs> yeah, like I'm scared for my life at this Do point. Do not swim here. <laughs> as you know, in a river that's like as wide as this hotel room. So, with a quick research, figured out that they, that's where they were. They didn't have you know seasons, time of years that you could could or couldn't fish or anything like that. 
all the water was open. You just had to, as Steven said, purchase an, a, an additional like little pass thing to be able to target and fish for bull trout. So we're like, oh, that's super simple. We'll do that. So I, I, that, that's a very long, big river. So Google Maps, I mean, I, I literally cannot tell you how many hours I sp- spent on Google Maps trying to find like the right places to go. We have a raft. Uh, I'm sure you've seen from some of our some of our stuff. If you watch anything with Scotty, you've seen us like use some boat ramps that are less than ideal. The Red Rocket, R- the old Red Rocket. Um, the Red Rocket seen some days. Hashtag thank you, Sotar. Um, <laughs> but it, uh, so I'm not worried about put ins as much and put ins and takeouts. Like I'm trying to find good water that I think is accessible. So I'm like, okay, this you know here's a tributary to this main river. Let's freaking figure out a way to go up it. So, okay, here's a tributary to this main river. Let's run up it and see, you know, see what we find. I figured out there was a, a boat launch, a boat a boat slide, just like from Short Bus One episode. There's a big boat slide. Oh, you've got some you've got some footage of it. Northern natives. Um, it overheated. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So, people who don't know, I guess we are talking about our Northern Native series that we shot last year. And if anyone yeah. wants to go check it out, it's it's on YouTube. But that's that's kinda give people some context if they don't know what we're talking about, they can go they can go watch that. Yeah, go watch that. I can't remember what episode I think it's episode three is the main one that we shot on this really small tributary. There was a big boat ramp that we or boat slide that we had to do to get down to the water. So in in going down, you know trying to find the access to this river we really, you know, got out of the way of a lot of the other anglers, a lot of people. It wasn't just, you know, call up a fly shop and say, hey, where do I go? I mean, this place was way, way more off the beaten path than anything than that we had ever found. But I mean, it paid off, though, doing that research. But, but yeah, I mean, doing all the research for it paid off. I mean, I, I mean, Steven's been on plenty of fly, f- f- trips with me that I'm like, hey, this is going to be great. Oh, this fucking sucked. <laughs> um, it happens. It happens. But he also knows that every once in a while we turn up, you know, like the Canada series where I found some river in the middle of goddamn nowhere, Canada, that we did this boat ramp on. We saw zero other boats middle of, well, towards the end of summer, but like perfect weather, mm-hmm. weekend there was not another boat on the water. Nope. Don't say that too often. We saw, I mean, how we saw one other person fishing and they were on the bank at the boat ramp at the takeout at a bridge. Like where, where else are you going to find that stuff? Like, that's not the kind of information that you're going to get on, you know, no some, shops, no shops going to tell you that some no. shop or yeah. some, in, some YouTube or some, you know, like, uh, some blog, so, yeah, some yeah, some fishing blog or or DMing Scotty and asking him where it is. Like, yeah, please he don't, doesn't please don't ask me where I'm fishing because I'm not, he doesn't I, know. I'm just I'm not going to tell you. I'm just sorry. liking ghosted. Yeah, because he because he has no idea where we were. I let I, we I, I, I do him. get a fair amount of people asking me like, hey, I'm coming to Boone or I'm coming this and that like to fish. Like, where should I go? And like, I get it if like you know if if you're I get like the premise because I definitely was in that boat. But I think people should understand like we have all put in time to like research and go out and like really put in time, like exploring these creeks. And so even though we're not like, don't, don't get upset that if we're not answering you, it's, it's because we've like put in this time, we're not just going to hand you over this, this silver platter of light. Here's where you go. Like, I think one of the goals that we are always trying to, or things we're trying to to share with people is like, get out and and, and just do it. Like just just try yourself, like see what's going to see what comes of it. And I think it's important to go back to understanding your fundamentals, like of fly fishing, understanding even the fundamentals of river. Like, like you're saying, like we, we weren't told to go to that river, that tributary. Like we understood that like in the main channel, you know, there's, there's well, it's well known that there's bull trout and cutthroat. And so we know that up the tributary, there's going to be fish as well. Yeah. And so I think on like things like that is that's where you should be spending your time like trying to understand and figure out opposed to like oh what fly are you using on this river? You know, in this exact mm-hmm. spot or what's what's your leader tip at length? That kind of thing. A lot of it goes back to the fact that 
what we really learned bass fishing, which is smallmouth and largely largemouth as well, are extremely, I mean, they're opportunistic feeders, but they're predatory fish. You know, it, they're not sitting there eating small little bugs off the surface, largely. Um, you know, small trout do, smaller trout, even big trout do that, don't get me wrong. But, you know, predatory fish that are really looking for a big meal are not, you know, sitting there looking up trying to eat, you know, a size 48 trico. <laughs> Unless you're in Craig. I don't know what the fuck is happening in Craig. <laughs> or in the South Holston. Or, or maybe there. on the South Holston. Like, it happens once in a blue moon, just like you'll catch a big fish on a popper. But, like, that's it. But if you want to actually target big fish. Right. You're saying. Right. If you want to target big fish, those fish are trying to find a real meal. That's like handing me one taco from Taco Bell and saying, like, hey, go check that out. <laughs> but, like, you hand me a taco pack, and I'm like, well, now we're talking. <laughs> and, you know, in in our smallmouth, trying to figure out, like, how to catch bigger and bigger and bigger smallmouth, that's what we were really learning. I mean, and I used to fish for four or five days a week for smallmouth. And then... When I started trout fishing, or I started trying to catch bull trout, or I started trying to catch you know different kinds of fish, I'm like, oh shit, this is the same damn thing. It's no different trying to catch a brown trout in Ennis in a fucking blizzard than it is to catch a smallmouth in Alabama in July. It's the same technique. It's the same. It, they're looking for the same thing. Those fish have the same triggers. Like it's a predatory fish, and that's what it's looking for is a is a is a wounded fish, yep. essentially. So it doesn't matter where you're fishing that. If you learn those concepts at home, you can go apply them to anywhere else in the world. You want to go tarpon fish in I don't know fucking Nicaragua or whatever. What do you, tar, tarpon are looking for a wounded bait fish? You go brown trout fishing. Guess what? They want a wounded bait fish. So it's the same thing. It's crazy when you think about it. You think like <clears throat> how it mm-hmm. seems a lot more complicated, but in reality, it, not saying it, not saying it's not complicated for because I haven't fished for tarpon or I haven't fished for this and that. But the general premise of like streamer fishing it is fishing with a, a wounded bait fish. That's it, and yeah. it can be used across the board. So it's not like you can only use this technique for smallmouth. You can only use this technique for trout. Like it can be used across the board in various places well and i think the big thing too to that point is that as far as the streamer fishing is concerned there is a huge learning curve as far as getting those techniques down and people yes. try to overcomplicate it by by trying to break it up in the different species that they need to understand is that no it's just you know there's just a generalized ideal for streamer fishing you run through that learning curve you learn the techniques of okay if, if i'm going faster or slower than the current you know the bait fish look like this what's the bottom look like that you get those general concepts down to Adam's point, you can apply that to any kind of predatory fish that you're looking for as far as streamer fishing is concerned. So while, yes, it is simple on the back end of things, the initial startup on it is very complicated to learn yeah. those techniques. But don't try to overcomplicate the complicated process by thinking you need to break it up into different species. It's going to work regardless. Uh, a wounded bait fish swims the same way. I don't care what yeah. what the wounded bait fish is. If it's a panfish, if it's a sculpin, if it's you know, a you know, something down in the salt water. Like it's, it's all the same shit. The only thing changing up for us mostly is coloration and hook size. I w- That's about it. But that goes back to my point that fishing with a fly rod is no different than fishing with a spinning reel, except for the type of beer that's in your cooler. <laughs> that's it. There you go from Coors Light to Crafty. I'm sure we're going to have yeah. some people disagreeing with that, but it, it, you know, I'll see you in the comments section. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll see you in the comments. Come fight me. <laughs> yeah. um, so I guess to, to pivot off that, what would you say for somebody who's, whether it's getting into the sport of fly fishing, trying to transition or trying to get into streamer fishing, like what would you say, you know, would your, would be, you know, your two cents to somebody? hundred percent. The number one thing is just, as long as you have blue line flies, like that's all you need. (laughs) Check. Check. It's just like practicing your fundamentals at home when you aren't on the water. Like just going back to my thing, like Alabama doesn't practice with just when they go, play football on Saturdays. Oh, yeah. They practice 20 days a week. 
Like, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if you count morning morning fitness practice, midday practice, and the afternoon practice, you get that five times. That, <laughs> they are not practicing just when they go play a game. And you, if you actually want to get good at this sport, you want to be into it, if you, are, if you don't live near water where you can go fish four times a week, you will never, ever get good enough to – to really fulfill what you're looking for by going and fishing six times a year. You won't do it. I mean, you simply will never get good at something that you do for six times a year. And let me break that down a little bit further too, as far as practicing is concerned. There's two, two main things, at least in my mind, as far as practicing go. And one is work on your casting technique, whether you're trying to throw an eight or 10 weight because you have a saltwater trip coming up or you're working on, you know, throwing smaller flies and, and shorter distances, you know, don't go for that parking lot cast or a 30 yard shot, you know, put, put a, a hula hoop out, you know, 10 yards, 15 yards away from you and practice hitting those, the shorter cast because that's nine times out of 10, that's the cast you need to be making. That's how you need to be accurate. And the second thing besides practicing your casting is practice tying knots. Uh, that's the second biggest thing. That's probably the biggest failure point I see on a lot of people that miss fish is your knots are just not that great. Practice your surgeon's knot. Practice your double surgeon's knot. Practice your blood knot. Practice your clinch knot. I know there's plenty of nights I'd be at the shop. We'd be extremely slow. I didn't have my tying stuff there. I would sit there and tie blood knots for hours on end. I mean, like, uh, you know, just... <laughs> Scotty over here at Bull in a China shop. <laughs> I mean, I, I identify your weak points. Like, I, one of the reasons I got into practicing my knots, I mean, I know y'all probably think that I'm just, like, fucking crazy. But, like, <laughs> I, I hated when I started, n like, fishing two flies, which is, like, such a trout thing. Like, you find me now, like, I'll never fish just, like, one fly unless it's, like, maybe hopper season or salmon flies. But that's it. Like... I'm fishing. I'm almost always run two dries or a dry drop or a or it or two nymphs or two eggs on a rig, <laughs> or two eggs and two worms. <laughs> or, or, you know, maybe, I was like, wait, did I hear that right? <laughs> maybe like two eggs and two worms. Like, is he crazy? <laughs> I will pin an egg. <laughs> but that's part of the that's part of the point. Is like I got to where I was like, this fucking sucks. Like I spend twenty minutes retying this if I break off. So. What did I do? I mean, yeah, I'm I'm crazy, but like, I sat down and I could tie those knots so fast, and like that's it's not just one thing. Like, oh yeah, I can tie a clinch knot, great, or I can tie a blood knot or a, a double surgeons, whatever, great. It's like ha like learning to tie those when your hands are frozen. If you can tie them like like the better you can tie them, sitting at your desk in perfect conditions the better you're going to be able to tie them when it's four degrees outside and snowing and you can't feel your hands. Like right. you're like, going to like yesterday, right? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, like maybe like yesterday. <laughs> so, you know, practicing that stuff at your house is going to make you a better fisherman. And in, in my eyes, you know, I don't, I'm not saying you have to do that. You can go out and have fun. I mean, people can go fish two or three times a year and have a freaking great time. Yeah. But don't expect to go catch monster fish doing that. It's great if you do. And it. I feel like you're at that point, you're asking like luck to figure out, you know, you were in the right place at the right time and your guide handed you the right fly and you cast it out there. And it was one of the few great casts that you made of the day and you caught an awesome fish. And there's nothing against that. It's just don't expect to go do that day in, day out. Yeah. Or don't, you know, don't ask me how I'm doing it. I feel like for the longest time I was, I was always going out in hopes of like, oh, maybe we'll catch a good fish, big fish today, you know, kind of like, like that's the hope. And like, maybe, maybe my fly will be in the right position at the right time. But I think what I've realized, especially when, when it comes to streamer fishing, if you actually want to catch big fish, there is a technique and there's a way to, to go about that where you can actually be setting yourself up in a better position to catch those fish opposed to just going out there in hopes or in, with luck, you know, in, yeah. in the back of your mind. Yeah. And I feel like anytime you're going out, there should always be something you take away from the day, whether it's the most minute thing or if it's a big, you know, key thing that happened, fucking key thing that happened that day. Um, <clears throat> you know, whatever it is, maybe you go out and you, you lengthen your tippet just a couple inches. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing of the day. It's like, Oh my gosh. Like, Pick up, try to pick up on those things, and any any time you get off, just try to try to try to take something away from that day. 
you know what I'm saying? Yep. Opposed to just going out and being like, oh, I went fishing today. Like, what, what did I learn that day? You know, what can I what can I apply now to the next time that I learned? It, it's a lot more in-depth than a lot of people, I imagine, would ever want to go. And maybe you never want to go, like, that in-depth. But also don't think you're ever going to be that great at it if, if you don't put those things to, to use at home. And that's okay if, you, if you're if you not, like, that into it. That's, that's totally great. okay. Mm-hmm. I think the point is just, like, you know, don't complain if you're... Yeah, but don't complain about it. Like, hey, you went and caught a couple a couple fish. That's fucking awesome. Fish don't care about your feelings. No. Yeah. No, <laughs> no they, they don't. don't. No, like PC culture does, and, you know, the internet cares about your feelings. <laughs> I, but, like, I fish PC don't. PC culture cares about your feelings. They care about, you know, cancel culture. They care about, C- like, cancel kombucha. Culture. Yeah. But, uh, like, yeah, fish don't care about your feelings. They, they don't care. Fish don't, fish don't care. Yeah. But it like, don't complain about it. If you don't put the work in, don't expect to get it back. If you want to per- put the work in, do it. But it, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people would ever get to the point that like I'm at where I like my whole life is eat up with a shit. But like, if I go and not catch fish, you know, it's, I feel like it's different. But like if you didn't do anything to prepare, you didn't you're not practicing your casting and you went fishing twice this year and you caught two fish and you weren't very happy with it, well, that's on you. That's not that's not on the flies you were using. That's not on your equipment. That's not on what brand beer you were drinking. That's on you, bud. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's also important not to compare yourself to other anglers cuz I think a lot of no. people a lot of people starting out can especially with Instagram, I didn't. Oh, dude, I didn't have Instagram starting out. It's rough out. with social media these days. Yeah, you look. Yeah. At everybody's gripping grand photos, and okay, well, cool. Yeah, well, they've been doing this for 15, 20 years or whatever. They're on, you know, this special guide trip, or they're they, they get their guide. They different. get they get to be out on the water every day, or like yeah. they live. Yeah. You know, yeah. right next to the river. Like don't, don't that's okay. Yourself to other people, you're you're never going to be happy at that point. Take it. Take it each step what, at a time. Yeah, regardless of what stage. Yeah. What hobby? But, I mean, that's exactly the point. Is like. You don't like you have no idea what that guy from that grip and grin picture that you're seeing on Instagram. Mm-hmm. You may have no idea what went into that picture. Like, no, not at all. and it, it might be stuff, and that is totally fine if it is, but it might be stuff that you would never ever want to dedicate yourself to do. So don't compare yourself to it or, or your fishery. Like, if your fishery at home grows 16 inch fish and you catch a freaking 18 inch fish. Be fucking jazzed on that. Yeah. Like, that's great for the area that you're in. You you have to, you know, like you're out here in Montana and you catch a fucking 20-inch fish and you're like, oh, great. You know, toss that back in. Like, we don't need a picture of that. <laughs> but <laughs> Think of those nice fish we caught yesterday there. Even that, that chunky one you caught. It's like, okay, yeah, it's a great fish. Okay, how, how do I get a fish like that? It's like, well, get out here when it's 20 degrees outside and row down this river when the wind's blasting it. How many other people did we see on the water yesterday? Zero. We saw one yeah. guide boat when and, we loaded. Oh, when, well, we, yeah, uh, yeah. when we put one in, guide that's boat. it. Yeah, doing the short float. We did the full float in the windy section. We were pulling right. fish out in that windy section there's a lot of a lot more that went into that that's just the upper level but like that was rough conditions you know that we were tired we were sore we were cold our faces were winds wind burned by the end of the day like we were beat but we got some nice fish got some great pictures you know but again if someone's trying to compare themselves to that you know don't like it's that was some rough conditions right or or don't look at fish that were caught you know a, don't look at a freaking 30 inch brown out out of montana or New Zealand. Or New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. Living in, you know, freaking Boone, North Carolina, and be like, fuck that dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> like, you catch a freaking 12-inch fish around there, like, oh, that's Beast freaking stoked. great. That's awesome. Good job. Yeah. But, but you know, you can take those techniques to go catch bigger fish elsewhere, but that doesn't mean you have to. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like, maybe you don't have the time or the money or the resources or the means to go catch you know, to go to the places that grow these big fish. And that's fine. Like one of the, one of the main things with blue line is like, we want you guys doing stuff near your house. Like when I worked at a shop, it made me so mad when I would see those people that would come in and say, Oh, Oh yeah. I only fish in Montana. Oh God. Those, yeah. And you're like, great. Okay. So you fish twice a year. Fantastic. <laughs> have, Good for have you. Have you ever tried to fish for a smallmouth? Well, no. It's like, well, there's a small stream five minutes that way. Why don't you go over there and try to catch them? I guarantee you'll have just as much fun, if not more, and spend none of the money you would to go out to Montana. Right. Oh, no, no. Yeah. no that's uh, not fly fishing. No, no. That's, that's it, not- it, Like, I have zero respect. I have zero respect for the people that do that. None. 
If you're not like, it's fantastic to go to Montana, and I go to Montana all the fucking time. We're in Montana right now. I'm in Montana, in Montana right Montana. now in a fucking blizzard. But like, it like I used to fish four days a week in fucking Alabama, the mecca of fly fishing. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like get like quit bitching about where you're at what you have what you know what what's available to you because it's whatever you have is better than what what either of us started out with and the information that's available to you is fucking insane compared to the information that a lot of the people who started started with but it's the it, to, toe the the toe the time on the water time on the water. that's the only way that you will ever ever get get better at it. So if you have like a golf course pond, a little community lake, there's a fishing area near you, there's a river stream, whatever. Maybe it's even freaking, you know, maybe it's sunfish or panfish, whatever you call them where you're from. Go fish for them. You don't have to go to Montana in a blizzard to catch fish. Or you don't have to go to... Patagonia. You or, can. You can. I mean, definitely take that <laughs> and, advantage if you and can. Do it when like. it do it when the veil, when the trip but comes around. Practice beforehand. But yeah, but don't expect to show up and catch fish if you don't if you fished twice that year. I mean, you can't expect to get out of it what you more than what you put in it. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of people see the the videos and the trips that we've been on, which has been awesome. You know, but I think they, they and they they're like, oh, I want to go on these trips one day, or and that's great. You should like you should you should explore and adventure and get around the country. Fly fishing is a great way to explore the world, in my opinion, one of the best ways. But I think on on the same side, it's like you can still enjoy your local fisheries, going on small like even just day trips with your buddies. Like that's what it's all about, and I think that's what we're trying to kind of convey to people with these videos. Is like you don't need to plan a huge epic trip. Just get out with your buddies, you know, throw the rods in the back and just and find somewhere that has yeah. some fish. I mean, that's what short bus I feel like is more about than that's, than some epic adventure. I mean, I mean, our bus goes 55 miles an hour. Like you it's know. not governed people on the Internet. It's fucking slow. It's actually that slow. It's actually <laughs> that slow. We got to go downhill to get over 55. All right. Let's just it be will real go over 55. It is not governed. I swear to God, I've. Do you feel safe when it's going over 55? No. Nope. No. <laughs> but, it, I mean, that's what it's about. It's like, go try to find these places and do these things yourself. And it's more, it's way more rewarding. If you go, I mean, it's going to suck, but don't compare yourself to the people of Instagram. If you go fish three or four days and you get skunked, like, I've done it. All of us have done, done it. it. Yep. Every Every famous fisherman that you know has done it. It's like you just have to go. Try some different things. Try some different techniques. Some different flies. But I mean, that's what that's what from Blue Line. That's what we're trying to more accomplish. Is because it. I mean, even even out here out west, you know, the closest thing to you may not be a Blue Ribbon Trout River. It still might be a brim pond or a bass pond or something that's got some carp in it or you know and for most people in the in the US that's what you're going to have closer to you than some big trout river is a place that you could go catch a couple of stocked largemouth bass or some stocked brim or some stocked rainbows browns like or trout. or yeah. something st- stocked trout if you're lucky enough we didn't have that in, in Alabama but fucking fine like if you can find a place to do it go do it and that's what that's a lot of what we wanted to push was like if we can get people to go to get jazzed about some of their more local fisheries than going to Montana. Maybe you don't live in Montana. Maybe you live in like the South somewhere like we do. You know, if you could get jazzed on going and catching a couple brim or a couple sunfish or, you know, maybe you, and, and maybe you're lucky and you catch a couple of bass, you know, like if you could get jazzed on that and you start working and you start learning more about fishing at home you're going to become a so much better fisherman when you do go on that once in a lifetime guide trip in Montana. You hop on a boat with a guide and he's like, "Hey, cast over there up underneath that bush." And you're actually able to make that cast. That it'll be a world of difference for you being able to do that. 
Yeah, I think I think another thing is not needing permission from people. I think too many too many times people are like, oh, are there going to be fish there? Like they need permission from either it's a fly shop, their buddy, someone on Instagram. Just go out and, and try it. If yeah. the very least, it's you know you don't catch anything. That's that's totally mark it off your list at that point. Okay. Yeah, you know it's yeah. all about exploration. And that's that's the guiding factor at least for me on these things. Like go out, find new rivers. Always be looking for something else to fish. Don't get locked in dumb fishing this all the time because that happens. You know, one of our favorite rivers back home that Adam and I grew up on right now, you know, we fished out all the time because as kids, well, that's what we had access to too is it fished very well for us. And then all of a sudden, you know, the last 10 years or so, it's become a very popular kayaking spot. And so, all hey, this, yeah. people that kayak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, don't do that on my river. The plastic hatch. I don't, I don't yeah, like the, you. The plastic hatch. <laughs> like, like it's great that you're outdoors and you're cool and I love your, I love your camo hat, but for real, like – Get off my water. <laughs> but yeah, so like it forced us to start exploring again, you know, something we hadn't done in years. And yes, you know, one of those things we had to relearn. And, you know, one thing, especially in the shop, when we were having to look for these things, we wanted to pass on to other people. It's like, look, constantly keep looking because, you know, that one golden stream, that one honey hole, that one place that you love to fish all the time because it always produces and, you know, you feel at home there, you know, that may not be there in five years. That may not be there in 10 years, which is happening more and more, it seems like. So constantly be exploring, looking for new places. Like Adam was saying, there's, it does, I don't really care where you are unless you're in the like fucking Mojave or something. Like there, you're going to have yeah. water around you. If you there's fish. water, there's yeah. something. Yeah, and don't be don't be a fucking purist around it. Like I know plenty. One of our favorite fucking things to do when we had free time was go to the carp flats and fish for carp. We were late for work several times. We'd have to call up our boss, but hey, yeah, we're hooked into a giant carp right now on a six way. Uh, we're gonna be a couple hours late to work <laughs> here. Like you know, just fish. Like, it's dead heat of summer. It's 110 degrees outside. You can't fish for anything else because they're all stuck to the bottom. Well, carp are fucking hitting. Gar are fucking hitting. There's always something that's going to be biting. There, there's something. Yeah. There's something going on that you can go do. And it, it, don't, I mean, don't fucking make excuses. You see people in, you know, the fucking South Fork of the Snake, or they're on the ranch at the Henry's, or they're throwing purple hazes. <laughs> the ranch. Or they're throwing fucking purple hazes up in, you know, who knows <laughs> where. Bear. Up, on, up, <laughs> up somewhere. Up, yeah. up somewhere. And, you know, it's like, you, you like you just have to go do stuff at at, at you know, locally. I I just have I have zero respect for people that I talk to at home that you know you oh yeah I went to Montana. Oh, okay, that's cool. What do you do in Alabama? Oh, nothing. But well, I think I think I think that's kind of this this general misconception around the sport that like you have to do it a certain way. And I think one of the things that we're all trying to do is kind of break down those bound those barriers, you know? And those misconceptions to make it easier for people to be just be like, oh, I can just go check out this pond nearby. And that's totally OK. Like, I don't have to worry about someone judging me or I don't have to worry about this being like not the right thing to do. Um, do it, it, think of it as practice. It, even if you don't even if you don't want to go. I mean, if you've ever played a sport and you had to go to practice and you didn't want to go to practice. Right. Think of it that way. The same thing. You will never ever be good when you when you finally get the invitation or you finally plan that awesome trip to Montana. You plan that awesome trip to go throw purple hazes on the Henrys. <laughs> like you you finally get the opportunity to go do it and you live somewhere like in yo know, that's not fucking the mecca of fly fishing. Then you're going to be more prepared. You're going to be more App, it's it. Things are going to apply to you more. You're going to be able to cast better. You're going to be able to land your casts where the guide is asking you to. If you have a guided trip, if you go waiting, things are going to start adding up. The amount of t like fish are the one of the fucking dumbest animals on planet Earth. <laughs> like the people of the internet that think <laughs> that they are like some magical. Like a fucking unicorn that you found, and you have to like pet it, pet it, and like make sure that it's like safe and shit's hard out there for fish, yo. Like when you go finally get to do that stuff, and you get to get you get to fish for those fish, it's the same damn thing. Fish live in the same kind of water on every river on the planet. Nearly, they do the same things, like hydrodynamics doesn't change if you're in Montana versus Boone, North Carolina. Bugs are in the same water because the way that they go down a river doesn't change. The depth that they're at and the seams and the rifts 
behind in the rocks. Water acts the same way on the entire planet, probably. Asterisk. Yeah. Maybe. 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 I haven't been everywhere in the planet. Yeah. Like Gurus I don't, out there can fact check. Okay, <laughs> legit, I don't know what's happening in Australia. Those people, <laughs> things are weird there. They got it going on though, <laughs> fishing. But but other than Australia and their water, the if you spend time on the water and you learn these things uh, on the water in fucking North Alabama, they are applicable to the rivers in Canada, Montana, Idaho. It like. It doesn't matter where you are. The more time you spend on a river, the more you learn about the the way the fish eat on the river, the better you're going to do when you go. When you finally get to go capitalize on that one trip of your lifetime, that you're just yearning to go fish like Patagonia. Well, guess what? If you spend a bunch of time on a river in Alabama or fucking Georgia or wherever you're from, and you go to Patagonia, the water's going to be the same. You're going to be looking for the same kind of water. You're going to be able to cast better at those holes that the maybe guide, maybe not, is saying like, hey, cast right behind this rock right here. You're going to be able to make those casts better like just, because you did it at home. Right. I think just because, like I think I ran into this a lot, is like I would fish somewhere locally at home. And, it would, and the techniques would work. But then I'd go out to Montana and be like, oh, my God, i got to switch. Like, what do I do? Like, I'd have to ask the shops, like, you know, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, this and that. And I'd expect to have to change my whole game up. But in reality, a, I, I, you know, a lot of those techniques do um, transfer over. Pinning eggs. Pinning eggs. Yeah. Works it anywhere. works everywhere. <laughs> no yeah. matter where you're at. <laughs> I, don't so, care. I don't care where you are. Yeah, so I think that's, that's a great point. But let's, I guess, to kind of start to wrap this up, um, I think we've we've covered a lot. It's been a great conversation. Maybe we've covered a lot. We've we've rambled for sure. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point of a podcast is to ramble. This is this if is you the, have a clear yeah. concise point of the podcast. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a podcast. We're learning. This yeah. is the first one. You know, we're learning as we go. But um, I guess for you guys, two, I guess two things. But first off, I'd like to ask before we close up, um, do you guys have anything exciting going on with Blue Line in the next couple months that you want to share? Um, so I will glad to announce this. We'll be posting this here in the next few days. Uh, by the time this is out, this will be old news, but, um, we've been delayed since the start of quarantine because of COVID on getting our reorder going on, which hit us pretty harder this year. We've been out of stock of a lot of flies. They actually are coming in here Monday. Um, so by the time I get home, they should be on my front door. I'll be processing orders all week and we'll be getting these back orders out as well as we'll be finally getting our website up to date. And I think we have we got some new flies coming in too that have been back ordered, um, uh, broke back and a Mima, I believe. So yeah, I yeah. Know that's been in hot demand. Yeah, guys, we, we I so much appreciate the support the the people that have placed orders. Even if you tie, we appreciate you placing an order with us. It we're not some big company. Legitimately, it's me and Steven running this shit out of our basements. Like this isn't like you're not supporting some big cause or some big company. We're not putting this money back in our pockets. <laughs> like this money's going to like yo know, everything that we're spending is all back into like fishing community things like that. Um, but yeah, co- COVID affected our production in ways that we could have literally never imagined. We never ever before COVID had issues with supply. We never had problems getting flies. We've never been out of stock on flies. And then we did this video during COVID, which we had already planned. And all of a sudden we're out of a lot of our products. We couldn't get restocked. And that was, it was, we honest, like we hated it seriously way more than y'all did. Um, anyone that's placed an order that was on back order, we, we appreciate your patience. Um, but it, it was definitely hard for like to get restocked, but we learned a lot. We made some changes. We changed the way our ordering system works for for us, not for you guys. And uh, it it means a lot that we're able to like help you guys go catch fish. Like uh, if you send a picture to someone else, like uh, like and we like, hey, I caught a fish on your fly. It's like, oh, maybe great. I don't know. But you send a picture to like our Instagram. Like you're going to talk to me, not Steven, because Steven's a 
Steven's not nice to people sometimes. I'm also I'm also in meetings eight hours a day. Steven, so Steven also ha- Steven has a real job. Um, but you have a real job. I have a real job, but you know, <laughs> a, a but, real <laughs> job, whatever you want to call that these days. But uh, you know, like y- y- you you send us an email of something nice, a fi- a, a fish pic of something that you of a fly like or of a fish that you caught on our fly like. That fucking makes our like oh, not dude. that's not yeah. our day. That like makes our week. Dude, we get jazzed. We're like we'll, we'll screenshot and we'll sit back for that. Do you see this guy? He just tagged us in this thing. Did you see his DM, dude? dude yeah, catching fish in our flies. Hell yeah! Like like, like we that, love but, seeing that. Like that shit matters to us. Yeah. Um, because we we I I don't I, like blue line isn't for me. It's not for Steven. Like we're doing this for you guys because. We know, like, the struggle's fucking yeah. real. We, we were there. We like, Because we were there. We've been through it all through today. Yeah. We, we don't want other people to have to deal with that. That's why we're putting these educational videos out with Scotty. We want to share our, at least how we get come about this knowledge with you guys so you can, you know, help expedite that learning curve. You know, we want to have access to those flies that we didn't have access to, that we've spent 15 years here developing, that we've been tying for forever. You know, we want to be able to share that and make that available for you guys to use to you know better yourselves at this thing we're not going to give you the golden key here but we're going to give you the tools necessary to improve yourself uh, I, I mean i don't i don't need these flies tied like these are flies that i've been tying since i like some of them literally no joke since i was 10 years old oh, yeah like they're not it, it i'm am not doing this for you i'm for, or, or for you. me, yeah. I, I know, no, <laughs> you, no, 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 sorry, can we, can we sorry, go back sorry, that? sorry so, cut that i like <laughs> i am not doing this for me i'm doing it for you like it's like I can tie these flies myself and fish them all fucking day long and never tell you about them. <laughs> like I can do that, <laughs> but that's not why I'm doing it. There are some flies we do that with. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I've got full, some, I've got full, some shit. Full disclosure: <laughs> there's some things that you guys just aren't ready for yet. <laughs> you will see it, but it might be a few years. So yeah, new fly, yeah, yeah. flies coming in. There's some stuff, but yes, we do have some new flies that are coming out. Um, th- but seriously, this is how long our our research and development takes. The the northern natives trips. When did that come out? August. We filmed that we filmed August, it in of, August of of twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Twenty was it twenty? Yeah, yeah twenty nineteen. Last year. Last year. Okay. Yes. We filmed that August of twenty nineteen, and that fly is just now coming out. We have those in stock. I mean, that was still an R and D pattern at the time. We've been using it for smallmouth and you know killing it with smallmouth and and trout, and we were just like, oh, but fuck, let's but see. I designed that fly for bull trout mm-hmm. for that bull trout trip for northern natives. And it is just now coming out. Like that is how long we put into like designing and perfecting a fly. Like we fished it for. I fished it for trout. We fished it for bass. We like we put mirror carp. Mirror carp. Oh, dude. dude, the carp uh, are just. I've caught more carp and suckers on that. I feel like any other fish. And I've caught a lot of smallmouth on yeah. it. But. Yeah, all right, y'all shouldn't. For real, don't really fish that for carp. But like for some reason they eat it. I don't know what's up. <laughs> but. It like that's how long it takes for us to like put a fly out. Those those guys of you that have placed custom orders, if any of y'all have placed a custom order for a Mima, like that, like we appreciate that for real. Like because I because we did get a lot of custom orders off. Like hey, I want those flies from Northern Native Series. Um, I will tie those. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, so we like we finally got stocked up on Mimas. It's so, like like the stuff that we put out is not just like. Oh, this catches fish here. I don't know here. We made a video of it. So here it is. Like, like look the, at us catch fish, right? Like That's watch me, watch me catch some fish. Here it is. Fuck you. Go buy it. <laughs> like, <Little> the, fubu? <laughs> <laughs> like the, the stuff that we put out is like, we really have places in our boxes for every single fly that we produce. And that's, that's, that's like the main thing that I want to go back to. Definitely. Is like the the stuff that we make is not like to catch fishermen. It's not for like oh this will sell. This looks good. Everything that we produce is like this is a fly so, that somewhere on planet Earth someone actually is like it's their favorite fly that exists. Boom, like boom. Yeah, and then I guess so. That's that's great. And then last thing, you know, for you guys. Just because, you know, I think we all kind of grew up in fly fishing kind of pre-internet age. I was I was kind of on the cusp. I would not say. dial up, but it what? was close. Not dial up. <laughs> yeah, not dial, not quite dial when up. When you were trying to go to Google.com, 
Were you asking Jeeves or were you Googling? <laughs> I was Googling. I don't even know what that is. So, <laughs> he just dated him. Or did we wow. did ourselves. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Holy but, shit, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but what, basically what I'd like to close on is for, for you all or you both of you guys, I'd like to hear from, from each of you. What would you tell yourself, uh, say, go back when you're 12 years old or just get into fly fishing? What would you like to tell yourself that you, you know now that you didn't know then? You want to go first? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. It could uh, be it could be about fishing. Could it be about tying. It could be about not fly fishing. It could be about whatever. But what 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 would it? What would you want to tell yourself? Two things I would tell myself. Uh, the first being that uh, all fishing is about luck, regardless of what you, whatever anybody else says. But to that respect, luck is a function of experience and preparation. So get as much experience as possible and prepare as well as you can before every trip that you go on. And you'll have a, you'll have the best possible chance of catching the fish of a lifetime. Um, unless Scotty grabs your line. <laughs> um, and I, and that last one's a low key jab at him for yesterday's <laughs> fish. Here. But I was, no, right. no, but yeah, for sure. Like, like I said, luck is a function of preparation and experience. So you prepare and just get out there and fish. That's how I would sum it up. And the second thing is, you know, you get all these these grand ambassadors and influencers and all that shit out there. You know, that wasn't there for us, but you know, that's something that is now part of the industry. Just don't take yourself too fucking serious. You know, this is this is at the end of the day, while it's a business for us, it's also a hobby for us. And we were doing this because Adam and I we enjoy this. And if we ever don't enjoy it, we have an issue with this. So make sure you have fun. Don't take yourself too seriously. And if you uh, ever happen to come across the at fishtails underscore bro account and you read some of the shit posts I have out there, you'll understand completely what I mean by don't take yourself too <laughs> seriously with some of those fucking yes. descriptions. So, um, yeah, that would be the two things I'd tell myself That's, growing up. I like that. That's really good. Yeah. Adam? The, uh, mine was like, I'd probably, I'd probably say like if I was 12, and I, was, I didn't start fly fishing when I was 12, but like maybe I was like 12 years old. Right. I could tell myself, like, the more you drink, the worse fishing you're going to do. <laughs> 12 year old you? All right, check. <laughs> um, drink water? <laughs> I'm drinking water and I'm fishing worse. What the fuck? Brown water? You mean apple juice? <laughs> no. All right. So, for but for real, like, I, I guess I would tell myself, like, the. Like the the shit that I'm gonna do later because of what I'm doing in North Alabama is going to apply to so much more than just fishing in North Alabama. Like and still to me that's that's insane that brown trout eat just like a smallmouth does, and it doesn't matter where you are on the planet. If you're fishing brown trout in Patagonia, Montana, or freaking Tennessee, they eat j- the same as a smallmouth does. Maybe you have small mouth, large mouth, whatever you have near you. Like the stuff that you're doing now is going to like really like is grooming you for the stuff that you might do later. Bull trout, for example. Like I really feel like we rolled up on that bull trout series and like in 30 minutes had shit dialed in. Or at least starting to figure or out. Or starting to starting to dial in bull trout because of smallmouth, like that's that that's that's crazy to me. But um, that's what I that's what I would like reiterate to myself is like the stuff that you're doing now, even though it's like fun and you're you're like, I thought that stuff was fun. I thought it was awesome. It still is. It's and it still is. But like really being into that, I'm like man, I want to try to catch like, hey, wh- how come ever how come sometimes when I cast this brim fly out, I catch like a bass. And then start asking questions about that, like that stuff turning into bull trout fishing in Montana or in uh, Canada and chasing like the biggest brown trout that I can in Montana. Like that, that stuff is what I would reiterate, which I guess I did, but yeah, I would, I would be like the stuff that you're doing at home is going to literally like change the way that you live your life outside of Alabama too. And fly fishing will change. Absolutely change the way you live your life in a I, good way. It, yeah, uh, I guess in a good way. In, uh, some, some others might beg to differ. Tell my bank account that. Yeah. T- talk to my wife, <laughs> but it like that. That's the thing that I would say is like fish are fish. I don't care where they are. Like, 
they're not smart. Like, there's some of the... Except on the Mo. Oh, okay. Those fish are smart. There's like... <laughs> fucking smarter than I. I've got smarter than I, yeah. Yeah, they're smarter than me. Those fish have a master's degree. I don't, there's a university. Yeah. There's a college. fucking fishermen. I don't know. There's a... There's a... They have a public... Their public school system is something the U.S. should really study. But the... the like, fish are just... Fish are stupid. They literally exist to make more fish and eat. And it will make more fish isn't, isn't and eating is just here? part of it. <laughs> but the fish that you're going to catch it at, you know, four minutes from your house still act very similarly to the fish that you've, you see those people on Instagram catching the fish that we we catch on the short bus diaries, the fish that you're seeing from any, any Instagram pictures. Those are the, even though it's a fucking brim or a crappie or whatever the hell you're catching. Fish or fish. If you can catch fish somewhere that is relatable to catching fish anywhere else on the planet. And if you want to be successful in catching fish in Montana or you want to make some trip to Mexico or wherever in the world you want to go, the fish that you catch at your house, that the experiences, the the what you learn from doing it is going to translate to wherever else you want to go. Boom. Boom. Let's end it at that. There it I is. I think that was that was awesome. Well, thank you guys for, for coming on. This has been awesome. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you guys for coming on. If for, for all of you guys who are watching and listening, I um, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this first episode. I think this is going to be a, a fun way, like I said, to dive into some of these deeper, longer form conversations. Some productive, some maybe not as productive. But it's, hopefully, hopefully you guys can take some away from this. And for you guys... Uh, who do not know about Blue Line or do know, do know about Blue Line, uh, I would highly recommend go check them out. Go uh, pick up some flies. We have been slaying fish yesterday for the the part of the day that we could actually fish, and it wasn't too windy. We we were we were catching fish on Blue Line Blue Line streamers, and uh, yeah, support these guys and you know just their mission and their goal with um, giving back to the sport and just making a, a great product that, that hopefully will help you guys out. And yeah, I think that's, that's about all I've got. Um, this has been fun. Any closing words before we, uh, before we, before we cut it boys buy buy flies from us, please buy flies. Like I, we need some money to keep doing that. <laughs> Like <laughs> we, we have, we have a, a, a bad addiction for fly fishing and this is how we feel it is, uh, through our company. Um, it's a long con cause we are not making any money right now. We're, <laughs> we're actually spending more money than we make, but, um, you know, so maybe it's like, what you gotta do to start. Yeah. Maybe like, you know, 15, 20 years, you know, it'll take off. I'm maybe, but like, yeah, if you guys help you guys helping us out. Seriously. Like if you place an order, that means a whole lot to us that doesn't go on deaf ears. Like. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Like the only, the only employees of blue line are me and Steve. Like that shit goes to us. Like you, you comment or you email or you Instagram or you place an order like Steve or I are the ones that see that. So and I pack the, almost everything and so Steven packs. I just, all I just want some respect, <laughs> <laughs> but it, like, it's yeah, a thankless job, but yeah, pl- play some orders. We, we seriously appreciate it. We, we really appreciate our customers and honestly, it's going better than we we honestly ever thought that it would. Like, I can't, uh, it's yeah. it, and, and now we're starting to get orders outside of like Alabama or North Carolina. We're getting people placing orders in like Ohio. I didn't know there was water in Ohio. Or like <laughs> anyone that lived there, but those people place orders and like we're getting people ordering like California or Maine or whatever. We're getting people now that are ordering from Mont or uh, Canada from our trip. And every time I get an order, it's never like, oh, fuck, I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to ship some fucking f- flies yeah. to this dude. It's <laughs> I'm like, so it's like yeah, oh, no, my no, gosh. Oh, wow. He got an order. I'm gonna, oh, that's cool. Where's this dude at? Like, yeah. oh, wow, he's in Mississippi. That's cool. I wonder what he's fit. Like, what is, what is he ordering or what's he fishing or whatever? Like, I always get jazzed when we get orders for stuff. And it's still weird to me Yeah, that we're getting orders from places that are, aren't like what we're doing. But... Obviously, it means that we're doing something right. Neither of us take it very seriously, but... We but, take our company serious. Oh, our company's serious, but fishing isn't that serious and and what we're working on, so... God damn it. God damn it. Son well... <laughs> well, and on that note... Well, on that note... Get out there. there go fish. Go explore. Have fun. 
and tag us in some pics. We love to see what you're doing out there. Love to see we, we yeah, I want to see it. what you're doing with my flies because yeah. that's that li- literally nothing like makes my day like getting a picture or like a hey check this out like I caught this with your fly. Oh, dude. Like that best. shit like jazzes me up like all week. It's one of those things like you, you told me that when I first started the company. I would, I would, I'd be like, eh, I oh, I would have never thought. Yeah, but now now we're seeing that and I was just like, dude, that's the sickest thing ever. Like I love seeing. I love when people talk like call our flies by name and they ask for them, you know, that kind of stuff and tag us in it. Dude, like some dude from fucking Ohio caught a fish on like this fly. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> that's yeah. sick. Well, cool. Uh, appreciate you guys listening again. And I think we're going to end it at that because I have to go to the bathroom. And you guys apparently like Alabama. So we're going to go watch the Alabama game. Yeah, there's an Alabama Outside. game on right now that I've been watching on the phone. Yeah. Go Tigers. Just saying. Anyways, we're going to wrap this up. If you guys are interested in picking up, we've got a new fall apparel line for Wildfly Out. So definitely go. Uh, there's no camera. But definitely definitely go check that out if you guys are interested in supporting and checking out some of the new gear. And we will see you guys in the next episode. If you don't hear back from Scotty, it's because we've killed him for his questionable football choices. <laughs> yeet, yeet. Bang, bang. Skeet, skeet. Bang, nigga. bang, skeet, skeet. All right. We'll see you all later.